All right, so we did just enter the largest dry caverns in the United States, third largest in the world. But about nine weeks ago, our water storage container tank did break up on top. We had 35,000 gallons of water come rushing out, settled in one spot, and eventually did make its way down here to the caverns. So in some spots, you guys are gonna be ankle deep in water. What? Did they tag us <laughs> out upstairs? <laughs> There are only a couple little drips dripping in, and two or three small little puddles. That's about it. You guys ready? <laughs> All right. So at this point, we are 220 feet below the surface. This is the absolute lowest we will go on this tour. It is 56 degrees year-round down here. Humidity anywhere from 50 to 60 percent. So that brings our temperature up to 51. I mean, 61 to 62 degrees all year round. So back in 1927. A man named Walter Peck was riding his horse to a poker game. He noticed that the storms were rolling in, so he took a shortcut that he knew of, and he did not make it. He had to stop, tie his horse up to a tree, and take shelter. Right next to him was a pretty large hole with all his water rushing into it. He was curious why he wasn't getting full of water, but after the storm passed, he went on to what was more important to him. That was his poker game. That's why you guys got poker chips to give to me. <laughs> Without that poker game, Walter would have never found the caverns. He did return the next day with his older brother Miles and a family member. Miles did like any other older brother would do. He tied a rope around his waist, gave him a handful of matches, kerosene lamp, and shoved him down the hole. When Walter got down here, he thought he found diamonds. He thought he found silver ore. And he thought he found gold. I'll tell you guys shortly what he really did come across. Right up here, please watch your head, and the third step is bigger than the rest of them. This room is a chapel of the ages. We call it that for two different reasons. One, the cathedral dome shape that it does make, that is all natural. And we've had weddings down here. We've had nine of them. The caverns was filled full of ocean water 65 million years ago. That's when we were at ocean bottom. Since then, we are from ocean bottom to mountain top. Our elevation now is 5,500 feet. And this hole right above us, that does go up 90 feet and it stops. This used to be an old ancient waterfall as well. And then directly above me, we do have our stalactites. They will not get any bigger than that because it is a dry cavern. So we'll have little baby stalactites down here. Underneath your stalactites, you do have your stalagmites. Those are also known as cave onyx and flowstone. So when Walter first came down to the caverns, all he could bring with him was a pick and a shovel. He dug this very hole here with nothing more than that pick and a shovel. You can see he was very, very excited. He was trying to figure out how much gold, how many diamonds, and how much silver that he really did come across. He sent his findings to Prescott Valley. A week went by and he started to panic because the car nor the horse is very fast in 1927. So he goes up top, buys 800 acres of land above us to get all the rights to the caverns. That was a great move until he got his results back. What he thought were diamonds ended up to be silonite crystal. What he thought was silver, that's considerite, a low grade of tin worth absolutely nothing. <laughs> and what he thought was gold, here at the caverns we call this Walter's gold. Scientists call that oxide of iron. Normal people, they would call that rust. So he found nothing at all. So he goes into a tourism business. 
He'll charge you a quarter, tie a rope around your waist, <laughs> handful of matches, kerosene lamp, and down the hole you go. Did you guys see our sign out front, dope on a rope? Yeah. That is us, 1927. <laughs> on each side of the trail is our ancient waterways. This is where the ocean water receded out of the caverns through. They both go down about 35 feet and they do not combine at the bottom. There's a light down there. Yeah, I put that one down there. <laughs> <laughs> We actually do an explorer's tour. We'll give you a hard hat, jumpsuit, elbow pad, knee pads. You could actually hop the fence right here and go into both of those holes. That one's a three hour tour. We take you in all the cracks and crevices that we know of. Very, very fun. You do come back from this three hour tour though. It's not like the USS Minnow. <laughs> <laughs> we have our hotel suite down here. You got two queen beds up on top. The couch rolls out to a king size bed. Your recliner, catch and love seat on this wall, your coffee maker. That back wall, you do have your sink, microwave, and fridge. We do provide you with a TV with no cable, so we only give you two movies to watch. <laughs> that would be The Cave and The Descent. Oh. <laughs> Very appropriate. You do have hot and cold water for your shower, and the restroom is good for about eight to nine flushes. At that time, the tank is full. <laughs> and if you guys do get scared while you're down here, we do provide our guard dog, Rocky. Oh. <laughs> you don't listen to him while he's kind of hard headed. Oh. <laughs> right up here in this display case is a halictite. Halictite means hollow like a straw. So that handle right there, that is hollow. They call it the teacup handle because that's what it looks like. It actually took him seven hours to pull us out of one of those ancient waterways. They had to be very, very careful with it. If I was to reach around that display case and touch the halictite, it would crumble like sand right there in my hands. That's how fragile it is. And of course, in the top, you can see where Walter thought he found diamonds. Poor, poor Walter. <laughs> Like I said earlier, we had weddings down here. The very first one is right here on this stage that you guys are standing on. That was back in 1977. There was a man that worked in our kitchen, a lady that ran a curio shop, they fell madly in love, decided to get married down here. Her friends and family, they didn't understand why she got married in a deep dark cavern. So she told them that she wanted to start a relationship off on a rock solid foundation. <laughs> Don't hold that against me, that was her words, not mine. She did leave us her veil from that wedding. From wedding since, they left us their bouquets. Seems it is so dry down here, you will die of dehydration within three days. So that's great news. That means that there's no bats, no bugs, snakes, spiders, scorpions. Not even bacteria or mold could live longer than three days down here. So for our hotel suite, I can guarantee it is bed bug free. <laughs> Only place in Arizona that can say that. <laughs> With it being so dry, it does preserve everything very, very well. This bouquet appears in the year 2000, 15 years old. You can still see the red of the rose, the green of the leaves, very well preserved. This lady did get married on Halloween. 2013, she did not have a bouquet to leave, so she left her black silk stockings instead. This next tunnel that we go up is man-made. They blasted it out to get up to that next room. It took them 40 cases of dynamite and two years to blast it out. So it is pretty steep. Take your time, use the handrails.
So we did finish building our elevator in 1962. That same year, Russia got kind of crazy. They sent some missiles to Cuba, the Cuban Missile Crisis. So John F. K. announced in the cavern or cave big enough to be a natural fallout shelter to do so. So we did. We brought down all these boxes of food up here. These containers of water, those have 17 and a half gallons of water in each of them. Medical supplies and sanitation kits. That is a toilet seat on top of a bucket. <laughs> this was to house 2,000 people for two weeks. So in 2011, we got purification tablets with a notice in the mail on how to make this old water drinkable again. So the owner realized we're still a fallout shelter today. So we brought down all this fresh water, all this new food up here. These are MREs, meals ready to eat. We did come up with this website, surviveit.us. We have an on-site storage. You could actually go on there, reserve your spot, rent your tent, sleeping bag utensils. Anything you think you need to survive a natural or man-made disaster, all you have to do is make it here and you will survive. That's the hard part for most people is making it back here. But in each one of those brown boxes are two metal containers. And one would be your saltine crackers. And your other one is your carbohydrate supplements. Basically lemon and cherry hard candies. The candies are not too bad. Those crackers, they are horrible. <laughs> the funny thing is when they first sent the supplies down here, they only sent them with six rolls of toilet paper. And that was it. <laughs> I don't think that would have made it very far. But if eating crackers and candy, it shouldn't be too bad. Right up here, I'll ask, please watch your head on Headache Rock. Right here is Snowball Palace. There's a very long explanation why we call it Snowball Palace. So, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys, you guys ready? Because it looks like snowballs. That was it. <laughs> but we asked people, please do not touch the formations because about 30 years ago, they used to encourage people to come and rub their hands across the bottom down here. And you can see the discoloration. And if we do keep on touching it, it will fall right off the walls. But basically, that is silonite crystal right here behind us. That's how it starts to form. It'll start out as these little blotches, and then it'll start to fill in all the cracks and the crevices until it does start to grow on top of itself. And it'll give us our snowballs that you see today. It only takes about a million years to get to that form down there. But I did come prepared, so if something does happen to fall off the walls, it's all right. I have a first aid kit. <laughs> know how we got our air in here. It is all natural. We do not pump it in here at all. So we have two sets of volunteers. The ones down here had red smoke bombs. The ones up on top had a very simple job. You see a smoke come out of the ground, you mark it, everybody gets to go home. Eventually the last volunteer that was up on top got tired and mad, said that we were crazy. 
He had no idea that we're get, where we're getting our air from, so he went home. It was a good thing he did, because they sat down here day and night for two weeks popping off those smoke bombs. We finally got a call from Sioux Pie Falls. They wanted to know if we knew why there was red smoke coming out the side of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Mystery solved. The Grand Canyon is about 40 miles as a bird flies, 70 miles if you get in your car and drive there. There's cracks and crevices that run anywhere from that 40 miles to over 100 miles, and that is why we're called the Grand Canyon Caverns. Just in case you guys are wondering, we didn't steal their name at all. We're connected with our air. <laughs> but actually down here in the mystery room is where they discovered a whole new set of caverns. It's right next to us. It's all of our rooms combined, but one huge giant room. It actually took them seven years to find it. They found it late in 2013. They're gonna open it up to us at the end of next year. That one's gonna be a spiral staircase from the top all the way down into that new room. So you go down that spiral staircase, to that whole new set of caverns. You come out right here in the mystery room, then you'd ride the elevator back up on top. Can't wait for that one. It's gonna be totally awesome. <laughs> Right up here is Bob. He's our mummified bobcat. He did fall down our natural entrance about 1850. He was scurrying around, trying to find his way out, smelling the air coming from the mystery room. That's where I was heading to before he died of dehydration. Shortly after, he did become mummified down here. With nothing down here to decompose his body, you can see how very well preserved he is. He still has whiskers on him, still has fur and his teeth. Very well preserved. With me doing tours all the time, I hope I get preserved that well. I'll be this way forever. <laughs> and if Bob was alive today, that's what he'll look like. That's their actual size. They're also known as lynx. I seen a bobcat about two and a half, three weeks ago when I was going home from work. I live nine miles back from here. For some reason, they like to hang out right at the train tracks. I have no idea why. This one guy was telling me the train would go by, shake the ground, and scare the mice out. So I was like, oh, it makes sense. He was there for some fast food. <laughs> yeah, from this side, you can see exactly how much supplies they did send down here. All the buckets of water, all the food, Right up here is our largest ancient waterfall down here in the caverns. We call it Mammoth Dome because it is so massive. So that first red shell is 92 feet. All the way up to the top is 142 feet. You go another 30 feet above that, you'll be in our back parking lot right behind our store. And then right above us, or right next to that, we have our grape clusters. Cavers, we call that popcorn, our cave coral. That is actually lime calcium carbonate. If you get that stuff, smash it up and put it in some water, do the same thing as Alka-Seltzer or Tums. Great for your stomach. I've not tried it yet. <laughs> I figured they told me that because I was eating some of those crackers over there. <laughs> that lime carbonate, they use that in almost everything that we use today. They put it in soda, use it in toothpaste, even baking soda. What I thought was interesting is that they even use it like in drywall and cement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there was some value down here. Walter just did not know about it yet. Good thing he did it because then he would have cleaned out this cave. Did you guys know that you didn't finish building the Hoover Dam? They finished building the Hoover Dam in 1935. Even though the caverns are privately owned, they sent all their extra material here. With that extra material, they did build us our suspension bridge that's right up here. That would be our natural entrance. That bridge runs up to a series of three 15-foot wooden ladders and a 65-foot wooden staircase that goes all the way up to the top. It is blocked off now with railroad ties, boulders, and dirt because it was a safety issue. After they built that bridge, Walter, he realized he could get more than one dope on a rope down here at a time. So he raised his price from 25 cents to 50 cents, and you had to bring your own kerosene lamp. Inflation. 
He did sell the caverns to the Rinsby Brothers back in 1956. The Rinsby Brothers are better known as the Yellow Freight out of Denver, Colorado. It says yellow on the back of their trucks. They're the ones that came in and put all this concrete down here. They did so at this hole right up here. That's six to eight inches wide. Goes all the way up to the top. They'll mix all the concrete up on top, pour it down that hole into our trap, open the chute, fill up the wheelbarrow, and take off walking. <laughs> a lot of work. There's over a mile of concrete down here, and it took them over four years to do so. Our current owners did buy it from the Rinsby Brothers themselves back in 2000, 2001. There are three separate owners, two are from California, one is from Utah. Really great group of folks. She left us her claw marks right up here in the wall. We know that's her claw marks because she left her fingertip nail stuck in the wall. That's in our display case up on top. Gertie, she was only a year old. She was 15 feet tall, weighed 2,500 pounds, and was a vegetarian. They found the exact same bones about five years ago in the woods at Flagstaff. That one was 25 feet tall weighed 6,000 pounds and was a carnivore. Hmm. Eventually when this one got older it would start to eat meat because you can see it does have canines. Yeah. Pretty scary, especially if they're eating meat. Do you know when? Yeah, actually when they were blasting out the stairway here behind us, they found 94% of her bones right here in these rocks. We sent those bones to ASU to get them carbon dated, and they're the ones that told us that they roamed the earth anywhere from 10,000 to 11,000 years ago. So about the same time as the woolly mammoths, saber-toothed tigers. ASU did keep those bones for farther study, so they sent us a life-size replica of Gertie. I think it was a fair trade, because now you can see exactly how big she was. Huge. These stairs here are leftovers of Hoover Dam as well. They were built with nothing more than a hammer, nail, and handsaw. Since then, they haven't had any repairs done to them simply because it does not need them. There's nothing down here to rot them away, nothing to decay them. So when we do go down the stairs, I'll ask please use the handrails. And at the bottom of the first set of stairs down here, that is a big step with a decline. So please be careful. <laughs> I like how we have a six year old going first.
All right, so we did finish building our hotel suite down here early in 2010. Shortly after we had the room rented out, the people that were staying down here were playing their musical instruments, so the owner realized it was great for acoustics down here. Not much of an echo at all. So he did build the stage late in 2010 for private concerts, future weddings. In 2012, the American Film Institute in Hollywood, California decided to tear down their building. So our owners went and bought 50 of these seats right up here. So any actor or actress known from 2012 before actually sat down right there in those seats. Which I thought was really neat that they brought a piece of history down here to get preserved. And that's exactly what it's doing. Right over here you can see how old the seats are. All the seats, they have ashtrays on them. Oh, <laughs> and there's a list of some of the names of people that sat there in those seats, like Marilyn Monroe, Jackie Gleason, Frank Sinatra, John Travolta, Steven Spielberg, Olaf, you sat right there on that one. <laughs> yeah, that one's still wet. <laughs> we are one of the 10 most unusual places to sleep in the world. We're number nine on that list. Number one would be a prison cell in Russia. I will not be doing that one. Only other one I know of is the ice castles in Sweden. That would actually be pretty neat. What does this went out for? $800 a night for the first two people. Each additional person is another $100 up to six people. Now, uh, can you stick you guys drums and stuff down here too? No. Oh, no, that might actually rattle some of the rocks ask. loose. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering about that. <laughs> It's only like violins or something like that. Right down here is the rarest form of the silonite crystal here in the caverns. We call that some cave ice. There's actually some up on top, right, be, right, right, behind, right by our display case. It's sitting on top of a light. You can actually see right through that one, and that one you are allowed to touch. So do you guys have any questions for me? Has there ever been a cave-in? No. <laughs> Last time rocks fell is when Meteor Crater hit the earth. That's up there by Flagstaff. That shook and rattled the caverns. So what rock, what rocks were loose fell then? Since then, no rocks have ever fallen. I would not be down here if rocks were falling. <laughs> <laughs> were there ever um, films made here? Uh, there is one. It's in our display case up on top. The Travel Channel's been here. Discovery Channel, PBS. Okay. We're gonna be um, the season premiere this year on Ghost Adventures. That's gonna be in August. And then the one that you see now today. That's with us on the tour. <laughs> ah, yes, that film. So you see a paranormal activity, saw stuff up there. Is that a, got some stuff up here, some activity? Yeah, because the original Dope on the Rope tour, there is no telling how many people died on that tour, because that was a rope rubbing across some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and then right here is our famous sign, paranormal activity. So at the end of the night, we do our ghost walk tour. We'll turn off all the power down here, give you an EMF reader, a flashlight, and we take you to four or five spots where you know there's activity down here. Those tours could be anywhere from 10 minutes to about an hour, depending on how scared I could get you within the first 10 minutes. <laughs> Have you seen anything or not just heard things? Uh, I've never seen anything, only heard things. Heard a little girl crying, the guitar string up on the stage, I've heard that playing, rocks have been thrown, just stuff like that. Not scary at all. Not scary at all. Not at all. And then right down here is my favorite spot of the cavern itself. Yeah, that's my favorite spot of the caverns. That's where Elsa lives. Elsa lives here. We all are. Isn't she the one that made the castle? Yep. Yeah. <laughs>
Even I saw frozen. <laughs> Take a look up right here. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's Jeez. Oh, that's good. Cool. Thanks. That's fine.